Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. This is the 2023 Land Rover Defender. It's the 130. This is the longest version of the Land Rover Defender you can buy. It is 14 inches longer than the 110. So still four doors, but you can really see the difference back here as far as the extended length. And we're gonna talk about what that does cargo capacity wise and overall room within the interior as far as your rear seat passengers are concerned. We're gonna to try to answer the question, is this the most capable three row SUV on the market? No matter what people may say in the comments section who don't own a Land Rover of any sort, they are very capable off-road, obviously capable on-road. And while you have a very unique system as far as the all-wheel drive goes on this, it does things that even Jeeps won't do, you don't have to take it off-road to take full advantage of what is available. So let's talk about what exactly is available. If you were curious, this is the U-Long with Acorn interior. The exterior color on this particular model is U-Long white. It is all-wheel drive, and let's talk about tire and wheel size, since we're talking about the fact that it's all-wheel drive, 275 on the width, so a lot of meat on the ground. So wide, I pretty much can't wrap my whole hand all the way across the tread pattern. A 45 series sidewall, which is good. That's gonna help with ride quality. And then that's gonna be wrapped around the 22-inch wheels. And the good thing is, whether you're on-road and need it, or off-road, and need it. You do have a full size spare here under the tire cover here in the rear. Obviously, we're going to have the really a classic look for the Defender with the tail lights. Everything is going to be nice and bright. A lot of LED all around the vehicle. And let me answer a question that a lot of you have. Does it have turn signal indicators built into the side view mirrors? You know what? I don't have to tell you whether it does or not because you can see that. And while it's a classic look, it looks aggressive, it looks strong, it looks bold. It's not just looks here. The boxy look, really kind of keeping with that classic early days overall exterior design for the Defender is what we still have here. That's why you're gonna see things such as the design we have with the turn signals. Make sure you use those because they're useful and it makes you look cool. Now, let me say one thing before somebody asks about it. The only way you can make your lights do what you see as far as that action goes on the screen right now, as far as the flickering effect goes, is to film your Land Rover Defender with a GoPro. It's the shutter speed of this GoPro that causes that to happen, just in case you were wondering. But if you're wondering how to make that happen, well, there's a turn signal inside the, or turn signal lever inside the vehicle that allows that to happen. You will have the fog lights here on the lower portion of the front bumper quite a bit of air going in through a couple of different areas, multiple areas for the engine. The Land Rover Defender logo right here across the hood. Tell me what you think. Should that be raised lettering or maybe be sunk in? What is your preference there? Do you have a preference? And while we have the smaller upper grille, we have quite a bit of air, like I was saying earlier, going into the engine bay. And what exactly will you find when you open the hood? Let's open that up and find out. Under the hood is the mild hybrid powertrain, so that means it's not full EV. It's what's called an MHEV, or mild hybrid electric vehicle. But what we have here is the three liter six cylinder. It makes a plentiful 395 horsepower and 406 pounds feet of torque. It is mated to an eight speed automatic transmission. And what about those all important MPGs? Let's talk about what we have here, where all of that is concerned. 17 city, 21 highway, 19 combined, and 5.3 gallons of gas for every 100 miles you drive. You know what, for the shape and size of this vehicle, those numbers are fairly impressive. And by the way, if you're curious, you do have a 23.8 gallon gas tank. You do have a conventional gas cap here. So for those who don't like capless fuel fill, well, that's a good thing. And you do have the adaptive dynamics and air suspension that are standard no matter which trim level of this Defender you choose to purchase. You can tow an impressive 8,201 pounds when properly equipped. And you'll notice that the back end is raised way up here. I've raised the suspension up just so I can show you the differences here. And cargo capacity comes in at an impressive as well. 
81.57 cubic feet. Now, we're gonna take a look at a couple of things real quick here. If you want to lower the rear of the vehicle, well, you can do it right here. If you maybe walk up and say, well, that's a little bit too much height for me. I'm gonna show you in real time how quickly this thing lowers. And so, pretty easy to deal with. Let's walk back out here and see if we can tell the difference on video. Hopefully you can, as far as how much lower that is compared to what it was. You can tow 8,201 pounds max when properly equipped. And the cargo capacity comes in at a maximum 81.57 cubic feet. Now, one thing you might notice here, you see that box that I have sitting next to the Defender. Well, there's a reason for that. It's for reference purposes. I have it raised up all the way. And here's the thing, walk back here to the cargo area and say to yourself, oh, that's too high for me. It's gonna be hard to load and unload cargo back here. Here is the button that you use, excuse me, here is the button that you use to actually lower the vehicle. You can probably see that coming down. So how much of a difference is there? I hope this shows really well on the video, but you can see the difference between where the vehicle was in correspondence to the box compared to what it is now. There is a lot of interesting little nooks and crannies. You have space in here, and let's see. I don't know if I can do this one-handed or not, but we're gonna see how talented I am as far as my abilities go to do things. And apparently my ability to at least pull the triangle out here, this reflective triangle, well, my ability is not too good for that because I had to use two hands. But you can see what you have here if for some reason you stop on the side of the road or need to change a tire or something like that, even off-road, you'd be more useful there. Well, that's what it's for. And I'll tell you what, I think I just opened things up on the video for some very interesting comments based on what the opportunities are going to be to use this triangle. And obviously lowering these rear seats is very simple, but let me show you one thing first. You do have the ability to have a pass-through, as you can see right here. So you can still have as many as six people sitting in the vehicle and have the ability to put, well, whatever you want to, skis or whatever, through the center right there and still have all of these seats in their upright position. Now, it is very easy to lower these. I can do this one-handed, even though I need to get that to come down. And again, one-handed. I need my videographer here for these videos. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be doing more of that soon as well. Now, from this particular view, you can see you have the fixed roof right here, glass roof right here, and then the panoramic there in the front. Let's go up and take a little closer look at what we have there. That one is not fixed. It actually will slide back and forth. You can open that up, as you can see right there. And then to maximize cargo capacity, all we're going to do is use this latch to release things, to push the seat backs down. As you can see, there is quite a bit of available space here. And we'll do a more in-depth look now into the interior. Obviously, you're gonna have all of the exposed screws here. Kind of gives it that rugged look and feel to it, but you do have the very comfortable armrest. Put your arm on there for the armrest test, and yes, that is nice and comfortable. All the materials are high-end and very durable. You could put a large bottle right here of whatever. And the thing I like about the rear seating area is that rear seat passengers are not greatly limited on leg space. As you can see, all of the seats right here, even though I only have the one seat over on the far side, on the passenger side, moved forward, you can obviously move this side up just as easily. And to gain access to the rear seating area, we're just gonna pull up on the release right here, and then you can push the seat forward on the tracks. Those are the tracks that allow for everything to move forward. So depending on where things are set, you can see there is a lot of potential legroom. The way the seat's set over there, probably a little unrealistic because it's so far forward, unless one of the kids is sitting there. But this is a little more realistic right here. And you can see, I'm five foot 10. I have a ton of leg room. I could sit back here for a while. Let's see if we can give you a good head room idea here. And so with the glass right here, well, that obviously helps a little bit as well. There's what the view is like. Try not to give you too much of an in your face look at the sun. USB connectivity, obviously we're just gonna mirror both sides will be the same way air conditioning vent, and the rear seats back here, the third row, there is optional third row seat heating for heated seats, and so that can be done 
if desired here in northwest Louisiana. I don't think we need that, and we're not going to need that for quite a while. We're going to have the lighting back here and the oh crap handles in case somebody wants to exercise that 495 horsepower and somebody says, oh crap, we're moving fast. But overall, there is plenty of space back here. And by the way, you do have the button right here on the doors on the front and the rear to unlock or lock all four doors. For, for those of you parents out there, that's a good thing because you can come to the rear doors first if you need to. Here is what the remote looks like. In case you were wondering, I always like to make sure that I show that. It's going to have the Land Rover logo here on the rear. I promise I'm not going to make you read it upside down, but you can see what all is there. And let's take a little bit more of an in-depth look into the interior as far as what your passengers will find, at least here in the center row. Going to have a little bit of storage space on the back of each seat. More air conditioning vents here, quite a bit going on where that is concerned. And four-zone climate control is obviously here. So we're going to have dual in the front, dual in the rear. You can control everything as you can see right here, depending on what you want to do or what your rear seat passengers want to do. And obviously there are a lot of options and features available depending on what they want to do. We're going to have heated seats only, it looks like here. As you can see, there are other options that aren't necessarily here, but you can have the seats that are ventilated here in the rear area as well and then we're going to have our connectivity down here with usb and quite a bit going on and yes there is a shade that can be drawn forward not only here on the panoramic sunroof but on that rear fixed glass as well and there is a lot going on here in the way of air conditioning vents beyond what i showed you so far there's some more right there and I do like the handles that are here that make it easier to get in and out depending on the height of the vehicle. But we are just getting started. The real action is in the front seat. And if you have a door bend snob in your life or in your family, they're going to have to call a shotgun or grab the remote from the driver because you have larger door bends here in the front. A very similar look pretty much to what we saw in the rear. Now you will have power adjustable, heated and ventilated seats here for the driver and the passenger very comfortable and we'll hop in here and take a look at what we have we're going to close that door just to get rid of some of that noise on the outside the defender logo there and i like the space that you have here for phones whatever nice to have a usb option there as well a lot going on here something that is kind of interesting is to have the control here for volume and turning the radio on and off right there as far as that goes that's in an interesting spot but that's where it is and you can see everything here for controlling the air conditioning. So here's what happens if you want to control the heated seats and the ventilated seats. You're going to push on that dial right there, just like I showed you right there. That's all you're going to do is push like that. And if you want to change the fan speed, you push the button right there. And then, well, you'll control it again with the dial, depending on the situation and what you want. So that is useful. It's good to know at least because it might be a little challenging the first time you hop in here to learn some of that. I'm sure whoever you buy the vehicle from will show you that. You can turn traction control on and off and do all sorts of different things as far as raising and lowering the height of the vehicle. So we can not only do that from the rear, but you can do it right here as well. And depending on your driving mode that you're driving in, that's also going to determine quite a bit. Now, tell me what your thoughts are on the shifter location. Nothing new for these Land Rovers right now, this generation of the Land Rovers. Depending on your situation, you may or may not like that. I'm always curious to know what everybody thinks. If you want to turn the auto stop start feature off, you can do that right there. Or if you want to turn it on, you can do that as well. There's your hill descent control. Pretty easy to figure out what all is here. More connectivity options, and I do like the pass-through right here. In fact, let me hop out so I can give you a little bit better view of what you have right there as far as that pass through going all the way through. There's a lot of space here. Like I said earlier in the video, you have a lot going on in the way of little nooks and crannies and places to store things. And here's kind of the ultimate old crap handle for people to grab onto right there if they want to, at least your front seat passenger. 
and then you're going to have your drink holders right there the multitasking lid for the center console because it's not only a lid for the center console it's also an armrest and there is what you have in the interior now we don't have the refrigerated center console or the refrigerator in the center console in this particular case not necessarily a big deal but it is what it is and you do have your vanity mirror right here so hi everybody there's that it does have the light and let's see how far back these go well not quite as far back but depending on where the seat is that may or may not be a challenge for whoever is sitting here but just to show you what's here that's what it is so far and i probably don't have to tell you too much about what's going on here with the driver's side door we do have a little bit more in the way of functionality including seat memory right there and just a quick look at what the dash and the steering wheel look like from this particular perspective we'll hop on inside get the door closed and that way I can hit the button to start things up right here. Something interesting that I did one time, I did an experiment at low speed just to see what would happen if I was driving down the road and just held that button down and it actually shuts the engine off. But the interesting thing, it's actually a safety feature. If the vehicle were to catch on fire or something like that and you needed to kill the motor to kill the fuel pump and all that kind of stuff, that would be helpful. Well, the thing about it is you still have full control of steering and braking. So in case you were curious about that, well, now you know. And there is the very nice modern-looking instrument cluster. We do have enough gas to make a test drive, so no worries on that. But you can see what all is there. Quite a bit going on in the way of different features and functionality. A very simple system to use here. It may look a little complicated. It looks high tech, but it's not that difficult to learn and use, at least not in my particular opinion. So depending on what you want to know about, well, you can go through everything and see all of the different features, different information about the vehicle, vehicle settings, as you can see right there, and you can go through all of that. Very simple to use. And everything for your cruise control right over here all the controls right here, voice commands and all that good stuff on the left-hand side. And there is that turn signal lever, that thing I was telling you about, those blinking lights on the front that don't have to do with the shutter speed of my GoPro. But you can see what you have right there. And the PIVI Pro, the infotainment screen here, and again, you kind of see that flickering effect of those bars kind of rolling their way on the screen. Again, that's my GoPro. It has nothing to do with Land Rover. But a very nice system that you can use here. It's probably the most simplistic that Land Rover has ever had of these generations that we've had. The last generation was a little bit more complicated to use. You can obviously pair your smartphone here if you want to. And you can go into all of your different features and functionality here. You can control everything with the seats right here. There we go depending on what you want to do front and rear. As you can see, you can use all of the different functions depending on what's available with the vehicle. So we can change our temperature. We can go from heated or ventilated to heated if we wanted to, which obviously I don't want to do that today. It's just a little bit too warm. But one of my favorite features here, and I'm gonna go into reverse. You don't have to go into reverse to do this, but the cameras, and there are multiple cameras available depending on trim level, and options and all that kind of stuff well it's going to determine what you have but here's a nice view that you can have when you're off-roading and it even lets you know because here's the thing let's just say for example we have the front wheels straight now well you notice that they were kind of turned to the left a little bit there if you were off-roading it seems as if the front wheels would be pointed straight based on the position of the steering wheel but when you look at the screen right there you can see that they're not so obviously that has its advantages and we also have the towing camera. So quite a bit going on here as far as that goes. It's really simple and you don't have to be in reverse to get to that. Let's see here if we can come up here and show you that you can get to cameras right here as well. In fact, there's even more to look at. So as you can see, the overhead 360 degree view, we can go right there and just touch the appropriate area on the screen depending on what we want to see and that makes it super simple to do. So we'll go back, I'm gonna go back to this area so that I can show you the 360 degree surround view that you literally can go all the way around the vehicle, zoom in and see what you need to see. It's really helpful not only off-roading, but if one of those pesky drivers 
that you run into or tries to run into you almost at the mall. They park too close. Well, you can see around the vehicle and make sure you don't return the favor unintentionally and run into them. But as you can see, very clear, very nice graphics. Everything here, very easy to use, very simple. Like I said, that's the advantage of the Pivi Pro system here. You can also see that you have your slope assist. So depending on where you're driving, you can see the angle of your Defender. There is so much here. I'm not going to cover every last little detail, but just so you can see some of what is here. If you want to have the auto brake hold mode and what that is, if you don't know, that has to do with when you come to a complete stop, the brakes will stay engaged until you touch the gas again. So there's a lot of nice options. There are a lot of good potential for what you can manage, what you can do. A very simple system for sure. And yes, you do have Apple CarPlay. All that good stuff is here. You have the Meridian surround sound system. Let me give you a quick demonstration of what that sounds like. I'll do the best I can at least with what we have with the lapel mic. So hopefully that's enough to give you a good demonstration of that to give you kind of an idea of what all is here. Like I say, it's very simple, but it is also very effective. One thing I did want to show you, because I know a lot of you are going to ask about it, does it have power folding side view mirrors? Well, there is your answer. By the way, I hope you can see this on the screen. But what I'm going to do is move forward just a little bit here. We're going to go into drive, and you can see that we do have the parking sensors on and around the vehicle. So one thing I didn't show you earlier, just wanted to make sure you know that that is there too. Okay, as we're getting out here on the road for the test drive, I did want to mention a couple of things I forgot to talk about earlier in the video. One of which being that you do have a tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. It's manually adjustable, but it is adjustable. There's also a wireless charging pad down here. So, what I wanted to do is get out here on this not so smooth portion of road where the speed limit is 65 miles per hour and give you a road noise test. So I'm just going to let you listen and hopefully the lapel mic does it justice. So I don't know how well my lapel mic is picking that up. It might sound worse than it really is. It might not sound as bad as it really is. And it's not that it's that bad. But you know, one thing about it is, depending on who you are and what you're used to, you're going to maybe say that it's too much road noise. Or you might say that it's actually really impressive. It's not too bad. It just depends on what you're used to. So everybody's going to have varying opinions. For the person that maybe hops in the comments section and says, oh, you need a decibel meter to measure that. No, you don't. And here's why. That just gives you a number. That doesn't tell you what people who are going to be driving and owning these vehicles and riding in them are actually going to think about what's acceptable and what is not. So, a very enjoyable vehicle to drive. In fact, the ride quality is excellent at least based on what I'm used to, my personal opinion. And this particular road is extremely rough. It may not look as bad through the windshield from your angle where the GoPro is mounted, but it's actually very washboarded out. Uh, depending on the vehicle you're driving or riding in, it can be very noisy and very rough. But this Land Rover Defender definitely soaks up the bumps very well. And for a vehicle that's as capable off-road as this one really is, it rides extremely well on road for what it's capable of. And here's something to think about for those of you who might say, well, you know, I know it's all wheel drive and, and you can, you have all that different technology and everything there. The thing is, is when it starts to spin one tire, it totally takes power away from that tire and sends it to the other tires that are gaining traction and have traction. That's useful off-road. It's also useful on-road. Let's say you're in a situation where it's raining and the roads are wet. Maybe it's a freshly paved road, kind of like this. This isn't freshly paved, but if it were, 
there's a lot of fresh oils that come up to the surface and it takes a while to wash all of that away. So that can pose some potential problems. Uh, driving on snow and ice, the same thing. So that system that this car has or this, this SUV has is going to be useful in every driving situation. So very, very nice to know that that's there. It really brings a lot of peace of mind to know that it's gonna help you out in that way no matter what your situation is. And as far as the overall technology here goes, I can't say enough about while it looks, maybe it looks complicated to some people, it's not. It's very easy to learn, very easy to use, and you don't always get that with real high-end vehicles like this, but that is definitely the case. It's The one thing about it is that there are some blind spots here, but you have your blind spot monitoring. That's going to help out all of the different safety features in and around the vehicle to help out when driving, when parking, all that good stuff. It's all here. A very enjoyable vehicle to drive. It's, you know, it looks really big when you see it from the outside, but when you're actually driving it, at least in my particular opinion, it really doesn't feel as big as it looks, but it's a very enjoyable driving experience. And you know, the thing about it, even though there's a lot here on this particular model, there is a lot more available that this model doesn't have. So depending on what you want to do as far as how you spec your Land Rover Defender out, well, there's a lot of options to go in a couple of different directions. So tell me what you think down in the comments. Is the 2023 Land Rover Defender 130 the most capable three-row SUV? I'm pretty sure that a Cadillac Escalade would not be able to keep up with this model off-road in a lot of situations. And again, it doesn't matter what non-owners say in the comments section. So tell me what you think. Tell me what your thoughts are. And while this is a very well-specced out model, obviously there are a lot of features that are not here that you can add if you want to spend a little more money or whatever the situation is. So I have to say a special thanks to my friends here at Land Rover of Shreveport for loaning me this Defender 130 for the day. And a special thanks to all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.